So guys, this is Sina from Sin Jobs and Ice Cream. Minasan konnichiwa. Sina desu. This is one of the most highly requested videos from the subscribers on my channel and it's about learning English. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I learned English and I'll divide this video into three sections. First, I'm going to talk about a tip that helped me continue learning English for a long time. The second part is going to be about the exact steps that I learned English from 2010 till now. This part is going to be like history about my life. The third part is going to be about the specific English learning methods that I tried over the past years. Before getting started, I would like to do a short introduction about myself and explain why I decided to make a video about this topic. For those of you who watch my video for the first time, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for taking your time watching this video. My name is Senna and I'm currently 23 years old. I was born and raised in Fukuoka, Japan for 15 years and I came to New Zealand when I was a first year high school student. I went to local high school and graduated from university. Then I've been working as a salesperson for a New Zealand company in the education industry for over two years. I'm not a native English speaker and I started learning English when I got into junior high school in Japan and I'm still considering myself as a learner. But because I've been learning this language since the age of 13, I thought that I could give you some information that you might be able to apply for your own English learning after watching this video. I believe there's no such thing as learning English easily or quickly. The methods that I'm going to talk about in this video are very common and basic. However, these ways have worked well for me to improve my English. All right, let's get right into the first point of this video. Get to know yourself first. I believe that the most important thing when it comes to learning English is to get to know yourself first. Albert Einstein once said, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb up a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. This means that everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, and I don't think it's right to force everyone to learn about something in the same way. This is the main reason why I need to ask you to figure out how you would like to learn English. There are four main parts for learning English, and they are writing, reading, listening, and speaking. For me, I experienced strong excitement by communicating with people in English. I knew that my goal was to be able to speak English fluently. That's why I thought I wanted to focus on improving my speaking level more than anything. Here is the second part. I'll let you know the exact steps that I learned English from 2010 till now. In 2010, I got into junior high school and started learning the basic English words and grammar rules as much as possible. I started studying abroad in New Zealand in May 2012. During 2012, I learned about myself and how I wanted to learn English was through communicating with people. So I focused on speaking more than the others. But it doesn't mean that I neglected to learn about the other things. I just spent more time on speaking and that's all. For example, I wanted to create an environment that I could talk to people as much as possible every day. So I decided to make friends on the internet so that I could talk to them after school and during weekends. I improved my listening skill by watching movies, dramas, YouTube, and listening to songs in English. I always liked reading, so I read some books in English as well. Towards the end of 2013, I took an IELTS test for the first time. I got a 7.0 for speaking, a 6.0 for reading and listening, and a 5.0 for writing. That's right, I got a 5.0 for writing, and it was clearly my weakest point. Therefore, I started to focus on academic writing during the third year of high school, which was in 2014. I became a university student in 2015. From there, I wrote countless essays and continued to improve my writing skill for three years until I completed my university degree. After graduating from university, I've been focusing on improving my English overall. For instance, if I feel like learning new words, then I do. If I feel like improving my pronunciation, then I do so. And it's been almost three years since I finished university. Time flies so quickly. As you can see, I started learning English from what I loved the most, which was speaking, and slowly took a look at my weakest point, which was writing. And after that, I've been trying to improve everything overall. Now here comes the third part. I'm going to talk about the English learning methods that I tried over the past years. There are mainly two methods that I believe are extremely important when it comes to improving your English, and they're input and output based learning. Input learning is a process of learning things from resources, teachers, and other people and keeping them in our brain. This is for listening and reading. Number one, learn the basic English that we learned during junior high and high school time. For input, the first thing that I did was to learn the basic English words and grammar rules as much as possible. 
I did that when I was in junior high school and continued to do the same after coming to New Zealand. I even brought a textbook called Ichokunin no Eibunpo, which teaches you the English grammar rules that you need to know. I highly recommend this book because it helped me a lot. Number two, focus on improving accent, pronunciation, intonation, and rhythm when speaking English. The first thing that I noticed after coming to New Zealand was how my English was not understood by many people due to how I spoke English. I guess this is because I went to local high school, but I felt that many people in school didn't even bother trying to understand me and judged who I was based on the fact that I was speaking English as a second language and how I was speaking English was completely different from the majority in New Zealand. At that point, I felt quite isolated and that's why I chose to adjust myself to the Kiwi English and tried as much as possible to change my Japanese accent because I wanted to be a part of the New Zealand community. Well, I just got a bit off track, but I started practicing my accent, pronunciation, intonation, and rhythm through watching YouTube videos. There were a few people who were giving tips about these areas, so I was watching their YouTube videos and kept practicing. Number three, listening to music. This is quite straightforward, but I listen to music in English and listen to rap songs as well. Number four, watching movies and dramas. I watched all of the Friends episodes and learned a lot of conversational English phrases while I had so much fun watching this drama. Number five, reading books. I read books and if I found words that I didn't know, then I wrote them down on my vocab note, searched for the meanings, and I tried to use them by speaking. Now, output learning is a process of using things that we learned or memorized. This is for speaking and writing. Number one, shadowing. I did shadowing through singing songs, but mainly rap songs. Rap songs are fast and hard to sing, so I liked the challenge and I thought it would help me improve my pronunciation and sense of rhythm. Number two, talking to myself. I started filming myself speak English on YouTube to see how my English would progress. I'd say this is one of the best ways to improve your speaking because you can hear how you speak and analyze where you need to improve. This is basically what I used to do almost every day. Number three, talking to people online who you have common interests with. At the beginning of my study abroad in New Zealand, my confidence to speak English was devastated when I faced the reality that my English was not understood by many people. I just needed to find alternative ways to talk to people. And that was when I thought that talking to people online who were interested in Japan or Japanese culture might help. And I was completely right about that. The people that I became friends with online that were interested in Japan and Japanese language were tolerant and patient with my English. I could feel that they wanted to get to know me as a person and understood how challenging it was for me to express myself in the second language because they were also learning Japanese as their second language. Number four, keep speaking English. I just kept talking to people and talk to myself every day and I would find that there were always things that I couldn't express well in English. So I always made sure to write them down and Googled how I could have said those things better for next time. Number five, keep writing things in English. Like I mentioned earlier, for writing, my best friend was my university essays. So before that, I used to do diary writing, but I spend more time doing academic writing in university. I've finished talking about the key methods that I try to learn English. Now I would like you to spend some time getting to know yourself and figure out how you want to learn English. I've talked about what I've been doing to learn English, but I don't believe that my way of learning works for every single person. You really need to find your own way by analyzing yourself and trying as many learning methods as possible. I believe that I've been able to learn English consistently for ages is because I've been trying heaps of ways to figure out what works and what doesn't work for me. And most importantly, I always love the process of improving my English. And I know that my strong motivation to learn English will never change for the rest of my life. This is definitely my ikigai. That's the end of the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed this topic. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section box below. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye!